This is a very, very special day today. This is a very, very special testimony. The instructions that will be given in this testimony are not to be discounted. They're not to be disregarded. And a lot of folks think that, that when words are spoken, that they're spoken in passing and they're suggestive. We live in this, this society today where that's very prevalent. Okay? These words are not to be these words are not to be discounted. They are not to be discounted in any way, shape, or form. They are to be heeded because once they have been spoken, you will need to understand that once these words have been spoken, there is nothing that will turn these words back. You need to realize that. It's, it's going to be a place where, as a Christian brother or sister, you have to understand that we're entering a season of inconvenience. We're entering a season. In fact, it's important for you to know as a fellow believer, it's important that you understand. It's important that all of us have a healthy understanding before we get into the details here, that when you pray to the Lord, when God asked you to pray and he said, Lord, let your will be done and your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven, you need to understand what you were asking for when you prayed that prayer. You need to realize what you asked for. Because when you ask for the Lord for his kingdom to come here on earth as it is in heaven, you need to realize that you have prayed for the earth, for oblivion to come to the earth. You need to understand that. Those weren't my words. That's right there in the book of Revelation. I didn't write that, that book. The Holy Spirit wrote that book through our brother John 2,000 years ago. And right after two witnesses are killed, it says when a seventh uh, trumpet is blown that the kingdom has come here on earth as it is in heaven. So you need to realize that when the Lord, when you speak, let his kingdom come, you have prayed for oblivion to come to this earth. Now, there's a hard truth in this, saints. You're going to have to... You're going to have to accept this hard truth. And I had to accept this really, really hard when God led me to a mountaintop out in the middle of the wilderness. And he led me out there. And I'm sitting there, and I'm standing before pine trees and ponderosas and all sorts of incredible things. And you know what happens? Because I had to come to a realization. He showed me that I had to let it all go. And so in this season, you're going to have to realize but you're going to have to let it all go. You're going to have to let it go. That's a part of asking for his kingdom to come. You just need to understand it. This is the season that we're in right now. Now, there's going to be some words that are going to be given. Some of them are going to be addressed to the body. Some of them are going to be addressed to the world. Some of them are going to be addressed to world leaders. This audio will be recorded. It doesn't matter. It will get out there, and the words will be effective no matter what and how they're spoken. Now, it is important as Christians that you understand the season that you're about to go into. When these words are spoken, you understand that these are not spoken from a spirit of fear. You do not have a spirit of fear. God gives us a spirit of peace, power, and a sound mind. It says that in First Timothy, actually, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. So we walk with peace, power, and a sound mind. It's not meant to freak you out or for you as a Christian to go, oh, my gosh, this is, like, super scary. Okay, no, that's not what it's meant to do. That's, in fact, if you get scared at a word of correction, that is the complete opposite of what the Lord has reserved for you because you need to realize that in this season, you have been set apart. Those who love the Lord, who guide their heart by his command of love and his command of love. I ain't talking about this world's twisted definition of love, to accept anything that's perverse and homosexual or, or anything that's of a perverse nature. I'm talking about his command to love. Those that walk in his command to love, those that have been sealed with faith, those that still walk with faithfulness in the Lord, still receive his instructions, they are set apart. They're protected. Every need they have is going to be met in the mighty name of Jesus. So don't discount the words and don't say, oh, well, this is going to be scary because this is not scary. In fact, uh, in fact uh, uh, read, uh, uh, if we read the first chapter of Joel or, or Zephaniah, 
they they clearly go into very strong subjects, very right out of the gate in the first chapter of those books. So keep that in mind as these words are spoken. Now, with that being said, my brothers and my sisters, it's important that you know that we're at a place within tribulation right now where peace has been removed from the earth. The next thing that will happen will be that third seal that will end up breaking, which will be hyperinflation, which they said that a pound of wheat and barley would be a day's wages. That's called hyperinflation. Okay. Now, this is the word of the Lord that he has sent me to give instructions to you guys. He told me, as I stood in his presence and as, his, as he's led me to the wilderness, he's let me know that in this season, he's setting apart. It's important that you know that he is setting apart both churches and places of refuge. There are, there's going to be set apart churches and places of refuge. You need to know that he's setting these things apart because our economy and everything that you have ever known related to paying your bills and buying and selling real estate and whatever else that we have interacted as and, and we, have, we have established as a monetary system, as a species of humans for the last 6,000 years, is about to come to an end. You need to understand that. It's, it's not going to be the same the way it was before. We're entering an unparalleled time. And so God, in this season, there's going to be a short season, a short season that's going to be coming, and it's going to be short. Its days will be limited when it comes, okay? When the day it comes, all right, what's happening is God is flooding his spirit into houses right now and into churches, and there are very specific places of refuge, and he's placing it on those hearts of those men and women right now throughout the country, even if they don't have farms and they don't have livestock, there will be those that do have farms, that do have livestock, and there will be churches that have heeded the word of the Lord, and they filled up their storehouse in the last three years when God kept telling them to keep filling up your storehouses. Well, those brothers and sisters that did that, the Lord told me that for a season, their food will never run dry. In in fact, he said that the spirit of revival is upon this world and that every single manifestation of the glory will be evident in those houses and in those places of refuge. In those places of refuge, their doors will be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Their choirs in those churches will not stop singing the entire time. There will be nonstop revival that takes place within those churches and within those places. You need to know that. The food that's inside those storehouses that will be there, that have been subjected, that, that, that God has set aside for those houses, will never run dry during that limited season. You need to know that. That means, like literally, as, as, a, as a sister in Christ uh, uh, told me today, that Lord was, was laying it on her heart because she, she, she lives in the middle of a city, and God hasn't released them to, to leave. They're there on assignment in that specific location. But God is laying it on their hearts to start going and getting very large jars because those jars are about to be filled up. And when those jars are filled up, they will never run dry during the season. It will be like the loaves and the fishes. It will literally be like the loaves and the fishes where, where they came down the last piece of bread and, and they grab a chunk of it. A chunk is literally going to manifest itself right there in front of people's faces and they will have more food left over. Unparalleled. And it will be during a season of great torment. And I said torment. It's a very, very important word that was used. It's a very important word that you need to hear because that word was not reserved for you. You need to know that. You have not been reserved for wrathful torment. That's not what God reserved for you. He has, however, reserved you so that you heed this word of instruction. And in during this time, that you make your way to these places of refuge. Just as the email put out the other day, uh, where God said that this nation would end up becoming divided and that the East Coast was no longer considered safe and that there are going to be parts in the West Coast that will. In fact, God said it would be considered the blessed coast, and that will only be certain parts in the Northwest. 
It will only be certain parts in the Northwest. There are certain parts that are going to be in this country and around the world that you need to be prepared. They're going to end up being cursed. Words are going to be spoken. And when those words are spoken, men and women, they will never be undone. You need to understand that. They, when those words are spoken, they will not be undone. Even as a Christian, if you prayed against the words and you said, I rebuke that in Jesus' name, I ain't got no spirit of fear. This is whatever. And you try to pray against it. The prayers will be utterly fruitless during that season of torment because that torment is not meant for you. That torment is meant for the world. You need to know that. There are two witnesses to all of trees that stand before the Lord. And it is very important that you know that great offense is about to come to this world. There will be areas. There will be areas in the United States. There will be areas throughout the entirety of the planet Earth that for a season will not have any rain, not a single solitary drop, not a drop, not a single solitary drop. I have not been led. I have not been led by the Lord to curse the land over the state of Oregon and Washington and his cursings have not been released over this area. It's important that you know that, that during this season, there will actually be activities and rain and, 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 and water and moisture in those areas. You'll need to know that. Down in California, God will obliterate California, uh, Los Angeles, very specifically. God has shown me the obliteration of California's uh, Los An- the city of Los Angeles. There has been... Prophecy among many, many, many uh, uh, prophetic people out there in the world that have seen a gigantic tsunami or tidal wave hitting the West Coast. It is important that you understand where that tsunami and where that tidal wave comes from. You need to be prepared for what is about to take place. What is about to happen, as God has shown me, He has allowed me to observe the impact on this planet with an asteroid. And there's actually a very specific reason why he's going to do that. Before any spirit says, oh, man, that's a whatever, let's go ahead and disarm that spirit and go right to Revelation. Right to Revelation. What is it? Chapter 8, when the the brother John starts speaking regarding uh, regarding the seven trumpets prepared to sound, the first Angel sounded his, sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and a third of the green grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something, something like a huge mountain was all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea was turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star blazing like a torch broke on the sky, and a third of the rivers on the springs of the water. And the name of the star was Wormwood, and a third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, and a third of them turned dark. And the third day was without light, and also the third of the night. It's important that you realize that what our brother John is describing Our brother John was describing an imminent impact with an asteroid. God's doing it actually for a very, very important purpose. I want to assure you that when it talks about blood, that there's a reason that's behind that. There's a reason that's behind it. And if you would like to know the reason behind it, wisdom will lead you to a place. uh, You can do a Google search and it says, Blood Falls, Antarctica. And, and when, you, when you type in that word, Blood Falls, Antarctica, you're going to see a waterfall come out of a glacier in Antarctica, and it's going to look like blood. You need to realize that that's not blood. That's actually primordial bacteria from the living cell that's within the interior of that glacier. The Lord showed me and allowed me to observe this so that you understood what that meant. The hail and the fire mixed with blood, it will take place during a season of torment on humanity. 
During the, three, during the season of torment, every type of plague and every type of thing that you can imagine will be executed on this planet as the Lord deems it necessary. Some places he will reserve. Those places that he reserves, he allowed me to observe here in the United States. There are sections of Oregon and Washington and Colorado and places in between in Idaho and most of the western United States and the, the northern part are going to be. There's going to be places that will be safe. You need to know this. God is not reserving his entirety of judgment during the season. When the season happens and when trouble comes, understand that while this is going on, all hell is still going to be breaking loose across the planet. Great, great offense is about to come in the name of Jesus. And during the season, you've been given instructions. You've been given instructions as we've, uh, as we've emailed you in relationship to artificial intelligence. You were given that word. It was right there on our website. We've sent out emails for nearly two months straight in relationship to that. You need to know that the threat of artificial intelligence is absolutely real, and the word of the Lord that he gave me to warn you in relationship to it should be heeded immediately right now. You need to take those words. Those words were not spoken to you in idleness. Unlike false prophets and that spirit of divination that's going through the church that would rather have the body of believers more focused on times and dates and blood moons and seasons and different things that have no meaning whatsoever, you'll notice that from those prophets that will make you pay money, that just said they can have a prophecy, you pay them $1,000 and you get a lunch with them so that, so that then they can speak a word over you, you'll notice that there's nothing that they say now. They speak in generalities. They speak without any instruction whatsoever. It's very easy for someone to speak in generalities. Anybody can do it. Anybody can. It's very simple. Know that you have been given precise instructions in this hour in relationship to this. And it's important that you know this. Because during the season of revival where, where the churches are set apart, oh, and those churches, those churches that aren't set apart, those ones that still, still adhere to, 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 uh, to, the, uh, uh, to God and, 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 and Babylon and that money system, those churches... Those churches, God looks at them like a prostitute of Babylon. No more and no less. They prostituted themselves. They prostituted themselves. And it's important that those words are spoken. A self-centered, self-centered, money-grabbing prostitutes of the church. Those are the ones. They didn't want to hear anything about church freedom. Those were the ones they wanted to keep their 501c3s. They were too scared. They wanted to accept the state as their sovereign. They will get everything that the Lord has reserved for them because he has removed his spirit from their houses. There's no amount of speaking. There's no amount of talking they can do. No amount of convincing they'll have. And they'll hate these words. They'll say that it's full of fear. They'll try to get you scared and say, oh, this is the kingdom. You don't have anything to be concerned with, and you're right. They speak in half-truths. You don't have anything to be concerned with because you are set apart. But by not listening to the instructions, those men and women, those prostitutes of Babylon, they'll lead you directly into oblivion because the enemy is doing everything in his power to put you in darkness in this moment. Now, it is very important, it is very important, very, very important that you heed these words. There is a very important reason why Benjamin Netanyahu was reelected the prime minister of Israel. There is something that you need to look out for, and there is a moment that God said and he described, and it's important that you know what it is. There's a moment that's coming. In the city of Jerusalem, when that machine and when that thing that's been instructed to you, 
when it begins conducting its war, its endless war, this war machine that our government has created right underneath your noses with artificial intelligence. You didn't know the threat of artificial intelligence and how it was built right underneath your nose? You need to go to our website. You better go to Church Freedom and get that message. Get that message. Because it was built. It's already been built. They're just adding more to it. Adding more processing power to it. That is a war machine that's been built to analyze every analytic data on the planet, to narrow in and focus on a target. You'll need to know that there's a season that's coming you're going to need to ditch your cell phones, and you're going to need to ditch your computers. You're going to need to ditch them completely and totally, totally and completely. When the time comes, when prophecy will begin starting, there will be 1,260 days of prophecy that will be given. And during that season, you need to ditch everything you have related to that type of technology. Get it out. Yeah, it doesn't mean you turn it on airplane mode. Get rid of it. Because here is the sign that you need to look for. There will be a moment in the city of Jerusalem when death will come to the two witnesses as described in Revelation. When that moment comes, when you see, when the, when the body hits the ground, when the two bodies hit the ground, immediately, immediately you need to evacuate every place of refuge. During that moment, you will need to immediately evacuate and make your way to the country. Don't make yourself available in open ground. Don't make yourself available over an open plain in the country. Head for mountains. Head for where there's deep trees. Head where there's volcanic activity, where the magnetism within the rocks will interfere with any signals intelligence coming from satellites and any type of technology related to the electromagnetic spectrum. When that season comes, don't even bring a radio with you. Don't bring a radio. Don't bring a transmission. If you think that you're smart by having a ham-operated radio, well, you need to get rid of it. Any signal that is sent out over the electromagnetic spectrum will be isolated, identified, and your position will be triangulated, and you will be killed. Up to the moment. While the 1,260 days of prophecy are being given in torrents of plagues and rain not coming to certain areas, do not reject the words that are being spoken. Those words aren't meant for you. Those words are meant for the Lord. Your safety and your security have been reserved in these places. You better make your way to them. Stay there if you have to. Do whatever you have to do. Because as long as you're in those places of refuge, as long as you're on the territorial boundary line, you are protected. If you are outside the boundary of those territorial boundary lines, of those churches and those places of refuge that he has set aside, your safety is only guaranteed so long as you have a word that has been spoken over you and you operate in a full heart of love. And that means when you operate in a heart of love, love is kind. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. It's not prideful, it does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always hopes, always protects, and it always perseveres. If you have an enemy that that surrounds you, you're surrounded and you're on the road, and you're at a place, or you can't be in one of these places of refuge, you better make yourself a servant to those men or women. You're a servant to everybody. You will serve out of love. Become the servant. His gifts reside inside of you. Love will be the thing that keeps you alive during that season. And during that transition, make sure that you make your way to that place of refuge. And in that moment, While you're there, and the revival spreads, and it will spread, people will be given great hope. In fact, they will fill entire stadiums with people. And all the talk will be about love. Love. Know that you have been set apart, and you have not been called to love with a perverse love. 
The spirit of Antichrist is attempting to perverse love and trying to make you accept something that should ought not be accepted. Christ's love, remember this, Christ came. He came to bring division. Christ's love is not the kind of love that glosses over deep divisions just for the sake of superficial harmony. That's not what his love represents. His love is a dividing line. And that means that in order to walk it out, you're going to have to make a choice, and you're not going to be able to hide the truth. Because you're not going to be given a chance in this season. It has made them near extinct here in the United States. These are not my words. You don't even have to. You can go right to the Internet. You can go right to a Google search and type in white nose virus syndrome for bats and go read the science articles where acclaimed scientists with PhDs will tell you that it has eradicated most of the bats on the planet Earth. How does that relate to anything? Which, what we didn't realize was that during the season, most people didn't know what bats did. But bats ate all the locusts. The bats were eating all the locusts. God had designated them to keep that army at bay. But now, now he's removing the bats from this earth. By removing the bats from this earth, this king of his locusts and this locust army, they no longer have any enemy to kill them and hold them at bay. They will multiply in numbers now across the earth in great, greater numbers than mankind has ever experienced in the history of all mankind. And they will begin, they will begin obliterating the crops. I'm not speaking of just the United States of America. I am speaking the crops of the world. No, they will head to China. They will head to India. They will head to parts of Russia. They will head to parts of Europe. They will head to the United States. They will head to South America. They'll go everywhere. And in their wake, there will be oblivion everywhere. You need to know that oblivion is not reserved for you. Remember the word of the Lord. Remember that the Lord instructed you to go to places of refuge. And he's instructed you to go to houses of worship. In those places, the food will never run dry. The food will run dry everywhere else. It will run dry everywhere else. There's no design either in your mind that will help save you. There's nothing. You can't sit there and think, I'm going to militarily outthink it, or I'm going to be a doomsday prepper, and I'm going to go get my AR-15, or I'm going to go get guns, or I'm going to get just boxes of ammunition and canned goods. It is utterly fruitless. Your attempts will do nothing but get you killed. You will surely die. Surely die. You need to receive the word of instruction and, and go and make your way to those places of refuge and to those places where God still holds his spirit. Those places, the food will not run dry. When you come, you bring the Lord's peace and love. Be prepared to be a servant. Be prepared to be a servant to all. Your money's no good there. Your money's no good in the places of refuge. Your charisma, what you think you can convince people of, it's no good anymore. It's going to be your gifts and talents and your love, the peace, the fellowship, everybody working together, everybody being in one accord, nobody counting anything as they, as they had of their own. It will supersede even the day of Pentecost in that respect. But know this, that know this, that during that season, the locust army will come during that 1,260 days. Know this. Know this and don't be afraid. Know that God has a plan and a purpose for throwing a mountain into the sea. Notice that when the first trumpet is blown, that there seems like hail and fire mixed with, with blood. Those will be the rocks so that you're not scared. Those will be actually the rocks that will precede the asteroid. 
hail and fire, that's representative of the asteroid itself. Asteroids are made of ice, literally made of ice. Big, dirty balls of ice out there in the Kyber Belt just spin around in space. When an asteroid is broken up in orbit, if you remember last year, or about a year or two years ago, there was a meteor that exploded over Russia. And they got it on YouTube, and it was a big explosion. Okay? You'll notice that there was fire. That's from the reentry. The smoke, that's from the reentry. But the blood, you needed to know that that has to deal with bacteria in the living cell. That has to deal with the living cell. And it's not actually blood. It comes from primordial bacteria. And the Lord wanted you to know the reference that you can look it up so that you'll have a point of reference to see just in case you wanted to visually see what it looks like. Again, is the blood falls in Antarctica. Type that into a Google search engine. You'll look at the image, and that's what you need to form in your mind. That's what's inside of this. When the first wave comes, it's going to be kind of like as corny as the movie Armageddon is with Michael Bay, as absolutely Michael Bay as it is, and we both, we all, everybody knows it's Michael Bay. Come on. Okay? There's like nothing, there's like no reality to that. There was a form of science that you can relate to if you have seen that movie. Before the primary uh, body, the, before the primary asteroid hits, there are small chunks that come out before it, that precede it. They're small, like the size of a house, okay, size of a small car. Those will be a part of the initial wave when that hits. When it hits, it will be devastating in many of the forest territories, not only in the forest territories in Siberia, but also in parts of Canada. You'll need to know there's going to be great devastation simply because of those. Then there will be the actual impact itself, and it will be like a huge mountain thrown into the sea. When it hits, it will hit the Pacific Ocean. It will be hitting the Pacific Ocean. There will be a tidal wave that will take place. God has allowed me to see that when that tidal wave takes place, the city of Los Angeles will be obliterated during that time. Anyone living in the city of Los Angeles or on the coast of the western part of the United States, as the Lord leads you in a moment, as the Lord leads you in a moment, and he'll lead you in this moment, he'll lead you to shelter and he'll lead you to safety in that moment. Be prepared. Be prepared to listen to the Lord in that moment. Be very, very prepared. When the impact takes place, it will blot out most of the sky. It will be covered in soot and dirt. And that is why it says that a third of the light would no longer shine. The bacteria that is within the interior of that asteroid will cause the waters to be poisoned. It will be poisoned during that time. Those waters will not be drinkable. Do not drink those waters or you will surely die if you do, even if you are a Christian. This will all take place within the 1,260 days. This part right here. After the 1,260 days, when the artificial intelligence and the war machine that was described to you, when, the, when, when prophecy is fulfilled, because God doesn't contradict himself, and when it's fulfilled in Jerusalem and they fall, when that happens, your place of refuge and your church will immediately be a target of elimination you'll need to head out to the countryside. You do not go back into the city. This is where it's going to be hard. Because for a short season, you're going to be protected, but it's going to be simultaneous 
hell and torment on earth, and it will simultaneously be the greatest revival in the history of mankind. When the 2000, when the 1,260 days are over, that is when, that's when they, um, that's when great hardship will come. It's going to call on, on patience, endurance during this time because you will be hunted to extinction. Mankind, saints, and fellow believers, you will be hunted to extinction. Every man, woman, and child that is a believer will be hunted. This war machine will make it its business to find you and kill you. This is why you need to head into the country. Because most of the food will have been removed off of the earth during this time. It will do everything in its power to draw you out of the countryside. With the efficiency of a machine, that's when it will begin imposing the mandatory identification marks into its system. You need to understand, it will be under that guise of homeland security. It will be under that guise. You need to be prepared for that. But you need to be prepared that the reason it's doing that is because that is the efficiency of a machine. Because when, when as, as man has built this artificial intelligence god that it wanted to create, okay, it's, it's, subju- it's subjugating itself and all of its authority to this machine. It's going to treat human beings like cattle. There's not going to be the emotional differences that we used to have where, where we can – debate or argue or or we can do that. It's not going to be like that anymore. You need to know that. And so in those moments when it's out in the country, it's going to be hard during those moments because you're going to need to learn how to hunt. That means you're going to need to learn how to hunt for deer and elk, caribou or buffalo or whatever else that's out there, and there's not going to be that much left. There's not going to be hardly any of that left on the earth because of the plague that will be unleashed during that 1,260 days. You need to understand this and come to terms and be at peace with it. It's okay. It's okay because it's temporary. It's okay because you need to realize that anything that this world has been doing It's not going to last. God has a plan and a purpose. Those that make it to the end, those make it to the very, very end, right before he returns, they will be like priests of God. They will not experience the second death, nor the second judgment. They will not experience this. They will be like priests of the Lord. But during that time, it will be hard. It's going to get really hard, my brothers and my sisters, because very few people know how to hunt. If I were to ask you how to track a deer or track an elk, most people on this phone would not be able to answer me. You're not going to be fishing with a fishing pole during that season. You're going to try to fish with a net. There ain't going to be that many fish left when this happens. So it's going to be hard after that 1,260 days. Now, strong word. This is a strong word. I know that nobody can speak up now because all the phones are muted, but this is a very, very strong word. I speak peace over the saints. I speak peace over your hearts. I speak peace over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, it's important that you know God, he's going to allow a destroyer spirit in the United States of America. This country, God showed me, there's a great division in this country. Great division. God has a word for the President of the United States of America. God has revealed some things. God has revealed some things about him and his household. This man... President Barack Obama 
you would listen to this recording. Who have you thought that you were? You have stood upon the mount of God. Who do you think you are? Do you think for a moment that your feet have touched the place of understanding? You have touched nothing. And everything you are is cursed. God considers what he has performed in his house an abomination. God has revealed truth. And only that man and his wife would know, and the Spirit acts as a witness between us. He has allowed his wife, Michelle Obama, and a woman by the name of Valerie Jarrett, whom I don't even really even know who this woman is, He has allowed his wife to take over the role of the spiritual headship in his household. Because he has allowed this to take place, he has no longer sought the Lord. He no longer spends time talking to him. He used to talk to him. A long time ago, the Lord told me that he used to hold a conversation with you when he held those conversations, he missed it. As he used to ask him questions and he spoke to you and heard him, know that you heard him. You no longer listen to his voice anymore. Instead, you listen to perverse counsel. And you have allowed your wife to take over the spiritual duties of your house. Because you have done this. And you have allowed manipulation and injustice come to this great nation, this nation will be torn from you. You will be unseated. You will be removed in your place. And God, he has set aside a man of righteousness. He will replace you. And the anointing of the Lord will be upon this man. And righteousness and love will be in his heart. And it will be in his heart to correct the crooked past. Men and women of God, this man will need to be supported by the church. He'll need to be lifted up. God has contempt. God has contempt for every branch of our government. To the Congress, if you wish to save yourself in this hour, here's what you must do. You claim to be a friend of the church. Now show it, not in your words and not in your speeches and not in false speech like that of a manipulator. No, in this hour, the church will stand tall and look at you if you wish to save yourself from absolute oblivion do the following. Immediately, immediately rescind every single marriage act that has ever taken place in this country. Completely give back authority and set loose the church from the restrictions that you have placed upon it. Get yourself out of the marriage and divorce certificate act. Repeal that law. Repeal the law of 501c3. Repeal the, Do- the Defense of Marriage Act and cease all activities in relationship to the church. Cease any aggression that you have towards it immediately if you wish to save yourselves from sure and sure destruction. To the judicial branch of the government, God holds you in contempt. You who are supposed to uphold the law you who are supposed to uphold God's righteousness. But instead, you become a den of thieves and destroyers of lives. You destroy lives a mere stroke of a pen. You commit grievous acts of injustice 
and call it justice. You allow your judges to be manipulated and appointed by an undemocratic committee. You violate the very oaths that you've stood for. You defend, you defend the abomination of homosexual marriage instead of upholding the law of God. Because of this, your authority is being stripped from you. Christians in this country no longer recognize your authorities nor your justices. There is no justice. Surely there is no justice in a hall of court anywhere in this land. No man can expect justice from this government. You wish to save yourselves? Then you come out and you turn back every sin and wickedness that you've done. Turn back your laws in relationship to gay marriage. Turn back your laws and repent for what you've done. Submit yourselves before the Lord in fearful, fearful repentance because you are nothing before his eyes. For the executive branch of the government, the Lord holds you in contempt. You have violated your oath and you have violated your covenant. You have violated it. You have created laws that are of unjust value. You have violated your oath of office. You have violated the Constitution and its protections for American citizens. You have violated it. You have killed. You have murdered. You have manipulated. You have destroyed your enemies. So powerful you thought that you were. President Obama, you repent before the Lord. You want to save your country from sure destruction? Work with the legislative branch and work with the judicial branch to overturn everything. Openly repent before the world and the American people and seek forgiveness. As a man who did not bring his house into godly order and left it to his wife, that you left your senior advisor to a woman named Valerie Jarrett. That is a woman of manipulation and injustice the Lord has shown me. You are to pluck her and remove her from that office immediately. Immediately. Your contempt for the church and the fruit you bear will cast a witness today in front of the entire assembly. You call yourself a man of Christ, a fellow believer, then humbly repent before the Lord. Humbly repent and overturn and make sure that every single solitary law that needs to be overturned by the Congress is signed by your pen. If you wish to save yourself from certain destruction, and sure destruction, you wish to see America not divided and utterly destroyed, do this now without delay. And I mean do it now without delay. Or your destruction is assured. Thanks. The Lord does not call upon you. The Lord does not call upon you to recognize nor submit to the authority of the President of the United States at this time. He does not call you to recognize, support, defend, adhere, share, submit to, or be obedient to the unlawful orders that are being given by the President of the United States of America at this time. That does not give you any right 
to inflict material harm, to seek ill, to speak a curse against this president, nor this administration. That is not what he has called you to do. In fact, he has called you to love. He's called you to love. But just like in the days of Redshack, Meshach, and Abednego, in the days of Daniel, there was a law that was instituted that if you did not worship an image, it surely you'd be put to death. And three men out of an entire nation decided to take a stand for Christ. Just like those days are today, you are to stand for Christ in this hour. You are not to submit to the will of this government and the evil, deceptive wickedness that it represents anymore. Only upon them immediately doing and repenting will it stave off destruction. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Heavenly Angels. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit. Oh, Holy God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you are doing in this hour. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 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 Thank you, to believe the testimony of Jesus Christ, to believe his testimony, and to walk it out and practice it, to practice it. If you decide, as a non-believers, you're only cursing yourself. You're only cursing yourself. And in that moment, and all your triumphs of science and intellect that you think that you can overcome these obstacles, I assure you, you can't. There's nothing that can be done. You're not going to be able to spend money. There's no billions of dollars you're going to be able to spend on it. Repent. The day of the Lord, it approaches. And when that day, great day approaches, there is no place that you'll be able to run and hide to pluck you out of the cave. To pluck you out of the cave. In fact, I'll remind you of what Brother Joel said, or I'm sorry, Brother Zephaniah. In the very first chapter, in the second verse, I will sweep away everything from the face of the earth. I will sweep away both man and beast. I will sweep away the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea and the idols that cause the wicked to stumble when I destroy all mankind from the face of the earth, declares the Lord. That's, a, that's an introduction. There's nowhere to hide. Repent. If you're an unbeliever, you have love in your heart, and you're a good person, and you, and you like to do good, heed these words, because that season of torment's not meant for you. It's, 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 it's not meant for those that believe. So let your faith guide you to one of these places of refuge, and let the assembly pray over you and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with this Holy Spirit and cast off all demonic strongholds that have, have interfered with you and that have tried to curse you. Go to that place. Repent before the Lord. Accept. 
accept Jesus' testimony. Be sealed with the power of salvation. Participate in the unlimited food that's being distributed. Get your family members to join you. Get your children to join you. Get your cousin. Get your relatives. Get your friends. Invite them to the places of refuge and worship. Take them there. Take them there. And give your heart to Christ. And then work with the assembly. And when the moment comes, follow that instruction. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you that there will be godly men. That the assembly chooses that will have discernment in these times. Men of God, those who are appointed as elders among the church by those who are overseers, you have a very great task on your hands. You have a very great task on your hands. God is going to use the gift of discernment and knowledge inside you and wisdom and every gifting of the Spirit so that you can identify threats that would try to engage the body during that season. He's, he's, he's going to give you that so that when people that have ill intent that would mean to rob or destroy the body or sow seeds of discord, elders, men that have been appointed by the assembly, okay, uh, it is your responsibility to, to, to exit those persons off the premises if they try to enter. If those people attempt to enter, you discern in your hearts that they have evil intent, and they show it in their fruit and the spirit that's behind it, a godly men, uh, you're going to need to take bold, forceful action in gentleness, in gentleness, to make sure that those people do not interfere with the assembly, and you are to provide that type of security for the body of Christ in this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus. Woo! Glory. Thank you, Father God. For those that call themselves leaders of his church. Ow. For those that call themselves teachers, prophets, elders, overseers, pastors, evangelists, or whatever a title that there is. Prophets. Oh, Father God, grant those that have faith supernatural grace in this hour. Grant those that have a heart of love to review supernatural grace to receive the abundance that you have. They need counsel. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Holy Spirit and counsel. Thank you, Lord, for sending them ministering angels that will help lead, guide, and direct them in this hour. For those pastors of churches that didn't want to freely accept church freedom and the corporation sold the stuff that God was freely trying to give them, you needed to understand. You need to understand those that still hold on to your 501c3s, those that still hold on and are more scared of the government than they are of the living God, of the Lord of heaven, the commander of the armies of heaven. If your fear of the government has superseded your fear of the commander of the archangels of heaven, your power is utterly stripped from your house. It is utterly stripped from you. The vine that was growing in there is plucked right out from underneath of you in this hour. You will have and walk in no power, but you'll have a strong sound of a voice. You'll have strong words, but they will contain no power whatsoever. Those in the spirit act as a witness between us and the assembly said amen even in this moment your power is stripped from you 
whatever words you had left will not save you. Not save you in that time. Whatever enemies you think you will make your friends, it surely will not save you. And God has reserved his judgment. God has reserved his wrath very specifically in that moment. Know this. Know that you were freely given. Know that the door is still open to you. Still open. Still freely open. For a very small time, you're still open. If you haven't churned your heart, you have not freed yourself, you need to do it now. You need to run. You don't need to walk. You need to run. You need to run. In the mighty name of Jesus, you don't, it changes nothing. It does not hurt the saints. It doesn't hurt those that have been set apart, protected, and have every need they have met during this season. But you, it'll affect you. It won't affect them, but it will you. Don't be under the misunderstanding that you will not be not touched. You will be touched. Your food won't come back everlasting. Your oil, it won't fill its jar back up. No. Your jar is empty. In fact, your people will lose heart in you. They'll grumble at you just as they grumble now. You foolish teachers that called yourselves so wise, called yourselves so wise and so full of understanding, yet couldn't read the simplest of signs on the earth today still debating holiness, still debating righteousness as if it is a thing to be debated. Fools, fools with titles and nothing more. And even their title will be like the dust of the earth. Anyone that attempts to make themselves an enemy to God, anyone, attempting to stop his message, anyone attempting to harm these two witnesses, surely they will be destroyed. They will not find themselves fighting against a man. They will not find a mighty army. For those that have good in their heart, those that have good in their heart and would not look upon those with good in their heart, they would look upon my two witnesses. They will be spared and be shown compassion. But those that look upon them with harm, murderous intent, before they're able to think the thought to pull the trigger, surely they will die not by might or by power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. Father, Father, thank you. I thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord. And I ask your saints, these men and women, to continue to lift me up in prayer. I'd like to thank you, Lord Father God, for the spirit that you have placed upon me. I want to thank you, Lord, that it has been granted the authority to conquer the spirit of divination. I humbly receive that gift and that authority. Father God, I pray that the assembly lifts up in this moment. I pray that they lift up in this moment each other. Those whose God has called with the gift of intercession in this moment, pray for those saints around the world as the Lord leads you. If you feel in a moment, you feel in a moment something taking place across the world, Immediately begin praying 
for the saints, for the believers that are in that area, that the Lord would begin taking them to safety, and ministering angels would be given to them, and they'd be escorted out of harm's way. This ISIS, this commander, this battle commander that is in the Middle East that desires to restore a caliphate, God is using him as the rider of the red horse to remove peace from this earth. You need to know this. No Christian is safe underneath of his rule. No Christian is safe. No Christian is safe. Any Christians that hear this, any Christians that are in the Middle East that hear this message, you immediately make your way to the state of Israel. Make your way to the state of Israel. Father God, we pray for the heart Prime Minister of Israel right now, Benjamin Netanyahu. And we pray that you turn his heart to show great compassion on the saints that will be walking to his doorsteps. There is nowhere else that's safe in the Middle East for our brothers and sisters. Saints, those who are in the surrounding area, immediately, 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 immediately begin venturing and traveling and seek safe refuge in the state of Israel at this time. Make plans to move. Sell your house. Sell your house. Sell your goods. Do what you need to. Do what must be done. Make it to the state of Israel right now. You are not protected under that battle commander. That battle commander means to destroy you. He means to wipe you from the face of the earth. If you are caught in this moment, then surely God will not contradict himself and your head will be taken from you or you will be taken captive and prisoner. This is the moment that has called for great patient endurance on on behalf of the saints. We have lived in a paradise nearly secluded here in the United States to understand what is taking place over there right now. No force of arms will prevail. This is a battle commander in whom the Lord himself is allowing to be directed. This is not by mere men that this is taking place. You need to know this. It is important that you know this. Expect a great war in the Middle East. During this moment, the Lord has allowed me to observe a nuclear detonation taking place within the interior of Saudi Arabia. The Lord has allowed me to observe the intimate moments of the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, and what he has privately been discussing with his battle commanders. They intend to take offensive action outside of the state of Ukraine and outside of the territorial boundaries of Russia. He is now setting his eyes on the state of, Is- uh, on the state of Syria to protect it and to make hell and war against the United States in that area at this time. That is why he was also away. He was never missing. And there was a very important testimony that was given in relationship to that. Those were not mere idle words that were being spoken to you. It was not gentle passing of words where you will forget one moment and the next five minutes you forget about it. Those words can't be unbroken. They have authority behind them. He intends, he intends to take hostile action. God has allowed me to observe him inside of a room, a protected room within the Kremlin, where I have overheard him discuss plans of destroying oil platforms. The price of oil, price of gasoline during the season will exceed $10 a gallon because of the destruction that will take place in the Middle East. Know that you have understood this now before it has happened. Know that unlike the false prophets and divination that would give you generalities and speak to you in soothing tones and tell you everything that you would want to hear from the Spirit of the Lord that's giving you clear instruction that there will be war in the Middle East once again. Surely, 
it will begin taking that kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Men, and everybody listening to this, another part of the vision that I have witnessed, he has allowed me to observe. I have stood in his presence. I haven't just stood in his presence. I stand in his presence. He has allowed me to see this. He has spoken to me. And he has allowed me to see myself on a journey, walking across the United States, a journey I do not fully understand, but now is becoming more clear. During that journey, I observed two nuclear detonations within the interior of the United States of America. I have been allowed to observe fighting within the interior of the United States of America. I saw American fighting American. I saw men of criminal depraved minds. I saw people desperate, cursing, speaking things they should not speak. I saw this and witnessed this. This will occur during the 1,260 days. Be expectant. Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you. Watch your words. The Lord tells me to tell you to watch your words. Watch what you receive from others right now. If you receive a video from a friend or a brother, and it speaks to you of end times, times and dates, or how the Pope is the Antichrist, or blood moons, or special significance on things of supernatural value, gently and respectfully not receive those words in Jesus' name. And do not allow those words to take hold in your heart and stand firm on the word that you are protected, set apart. You have every need you have met during this season in Jesus' name. You have been given a spirit of peace, power, and a sound mind. Remember this. If they try to speak into your life, rebuke the very words that come out of their mouth. It is okay to say, I rebuke those words in Jesus' name. And then gently lead people to uh, lead that brother or that sister to understand that you're walking on a word and that they themselves do not need to fear. They need to be obedient. Remember that. For those of you that are going without work right now, having a hard time financially, you're not alone. You're not alone. This world is bankrupt. Our country is bankrupt. That's why it was prophesied to you a year ago that Obama intended to fight against both Russia and to take over their warm water port in Syria. God showed you this a year ago. Those that have paid attention, those that have read our Facebook posts, those that have heard the instruction of the Lord have been given ample warning. It didn't take them by surprise. It shouldn't be surprising when you actually see it happen before your very eyes. Did it happen? Thus said the Lord. And just like in those moments, thus said the Lord now. So remember this. The country is bankrupt. The country is bankrupt. So for those that are seeking employment, those that are under a financial hardship right now, do not be alarmed. Your Father in Heaven knows your circumstance, and He knows your season. You need to let that go. Let 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 your dreams and your desires of tomorrow. You need to not be worried about tomorrow. God said that surely every single day has enough trouble of its own. You need to trust in the Lord for today. 
and you're going to need to trust in the Lord for every single solitary day. And during this season, during the season of calamity and hardship, remember the words that were spoken about going to places of refuge with your family. It didn't say, go get a job with a six-figure salary and go and donate 10% of your income to the church during the season of calamity. It says, be prepared to get your family over the territorial boundary of that place of refuge. That wasn't a suggestion. That was an order. That was a command instruction to you. That was not a suggestion to you. Be prepared that you're going to be. Be prepared, saints, that there are going to be saints that you're going to have to leave your homes in a season. You're going to have to leave your comfort zones. You're going to have to leave your places where you have completely known life as you've known it your entire life. That you're going to have to leave those places, and you're going to have to seek shelter where the Lord told you to seek shelter. Don't delay. If you delay, you might be stopped along the road. And if you're stopped along the road, you might become the servant of another. Remember those words. They're not meant to frighten you. They're meant to give you wisdom and instruction so that when the moment happens, you're prepared and you always retain your peace, even in the middle of tribulation. It's very important that you hold on to your peace during this moment of tribulation. And this is why and this is how it is happening. Become expectant in the unexpected. Become expectant of the unexpected. Be prepared for the suddenly. This instruction today is preparing you for the suddenly. So you are suddenly not caught off guard. That you are not suddenly placed or led like a lamb to the slaughterhouse. Because surely that is what your enemy is attempting to do to you right now in front of your very eyes. Thank you, Father God, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Mighty Lord. Thank you, Father God. I discern the presence of prophets and evangelists and men and women of God on this phone call. I discern them, and I thank you, Lord, for my brothers and my sisters, those that still fear and those that still revere your name, those that do not compromise with evil and darkness for the sake of their own lives, those that would not shrink even from death, those who hold on to their testimonies, even in the darkest of hours. Thank you, Lord Father God, for those men and women Thank you, Father God, for setting them apart in this hour right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light shine the brightest right now. This is the moment, my brothers and my sisters, that we let our light shine for our Father the brightest. This is that moment. This is that moment when darkness, when it's getting as dark as dark can get. And you know the wickedness that's in this world. And now is that moment where you let your light shine the brightest in the face of that evil. And you shine it in a spotlight. And if the spotlight doesn't work, you go and get yourself a light from the lighthouse. And then you just magnify that with a Hubble telescope. And then you just shine it as absolute shining as bright as you possibly can and let it pierce that darkness all the way until the very edges of the cosmos if it has to in the mighty name of jesus thank you holy ghost for my brothers and my sisters thank you lord that their prayers are effective in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord that you are setting aside for them great wealth father god in the mighty name of jesus thank you father god for reserving to them becoming the storehouse in this hour right now in the mighty name of jesus 
Thank you, Father God, that men and women and people from every nation would come into those houses, Father God, and they would receive salvation, and they would receive your bread and your oils in that place. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for that salvation. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for this. In the mighty name, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for setting them apart. Thank you, Lord, for giving their families that they're praying for safe passage. Those that are praying for a family member, God has heard your prayer, and he's going to set them apart, and he's going to lead them directly to where they've got to go. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Uh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If there's anything else... It needs to be added to this testimony, Lord. Place it on my heart. If not, Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 There is a special blessing of covering over those assembly. There's a special covering over you right now. God is sealing you with protection right now in the heavenlies. You are sealed, literally sealed, sealed supernaturally. You can't even see it, but you're going to feel it right now. You're going to feel that seal coming upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel it envelope you. You're going to feel it surround you. You're going to feel that right now. God is releasing that. He has sealed you apart. He is using you as a lampstand. He is using you as a voice. He is using you as his voice in a dark place right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Speak with the boldness of the Lord that he has placed inside you and do not compromise your message. Do not compromise it for absolutely anyone. Speak the boldness of the Lord and speak it with gentleness and love. Speak it with gentleness and love. People will receive you with that gentleness and love and compassion that he has reserved for us. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. This is a lot today. I'm going to know that I'm going to cut this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download this. I'm going to upload this to um, our YouTube channel, and I'm going to put it on testimony today. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it there. And uh, and as the Lord leads you, as the Lord leads you to share this word, whether you share it with your own words or whether you share it by sharing uh, audio or whatever we have on that YouTube channel with one of your friends, you do what the Lord leads you. Just know. That the more people that know, the more people will be saved during the season. And then it'll end up saving millions of people. You won't even know who they are. You're not even going to know who they are. Just know that every time you share it and people hear this, they're going to know the difference. They're going to know when the Lord's speaking to them and when a false prophet's speaking. And they're going to know the difference. They're going to know the heart. They're going to discern it right through the audio of the video. They will know the difference. And in that moment, they will have been given their instructions. And during that moment, when they've been given instructions, surely, if they receive those instructions, they'll be saved. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Holy Ghost. I thank you, Father God. I would ask the assembly to lift me up in prayer for continued protection that the Lord continually protects me against any assignment of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, these words will not be unbroken and they will not be undone now that they have been spoken. They will come to pass. No force, no government, no administration will be able to undo them. Please lift me up for safe passage. Lift me up that I evade and I am led to evade unnecessary conflict as the Lord sets me out to deliver a message. Thank you for that. Thank you for lifting me up in that area. That's all that the Lord has to say in this moment. As the Lord leads in the future, you'll be given another instruction in that moment as it's necessary. But in this time, I'm going to leave it right there. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you, and may God bless your week. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.